The Thieves Guild by Jake Kerr. Episode 25. An expensive boat. Mailer felt the wagon lurch to a halt. She couldn't see anything, but as the noise from the wagon wheels hitting the cobblestone ceased, she could hear the distant murmur of voices and occasionally a shout. The plan was for them to make it to the docks near the Golden Triangle, where they would find a boat to take them across the river. A landing on the old quarter side of the river was against the law. As a result, the three of them had to somehow convince the captain to make the trip. Mailer assumed that meant violence of some sort. The wagon started moving again. The jolts of the cobblestones and the clattering of the wagon wheels were the only company as Mailer, Allard and Rafe crouched under bolts of material. The three of them were dressed in Harvest Guild clothing, with Allard in a large robe with a hood that covered his distinctive bald head and scarred face. With a bump, the wagon stopped again. A few moments later, Dealey whipped back the canvas and slid some of the material aside. The diffused glow of sunset filled their hiding spot. Quickly, we must not waste time, Allard said, climbing out of the wagon. Dealey grabbed Allard's forearm. Is this the best plan, deputy? As we passed, the bridge looked like it was in disarray. Maybe the chaos would be protection enough. Allard shook his head. No, we would need to have hundreds to prevent our capture. He smiled. But hearing of the chaos there makes me feel like our guildmaster has made it across. He turned to Mela. Your plan was well conceived. Mela couldn't suppress her smile. She had practically laughed when she drew up the plan to get Allard and Rafe out of the night prison and across the bridge. It was so absurd she assumed they'd all end up in irons. Yet it turned out to be a success. Of course, it wasn't yet a total success, but getting the Guildmaster to safety was the most important thing, and she had presumably done that. Thank you again, Dealey. Allard started down a path from the road to some docks that stood across the North Fork from the Golden Triangle. Mela stared across the small river that fed the Great River. The lush colours and trees of the Golden Triangle filled her vision. The Golden Triangle was a gorgeous park that stood at the spot where the North Fork met the Great River. You had to cross Trader's Bridge and enter the wealthy Upper Triangle to get to the beautiful park, and while every citizen of Ness was presumably welcome to do so, the reality was that anyone that didn't live in the Upper Triangle was shadowed and harassed by a special contingent of night protectors who cleared out the riffraff. Mela hated those that lived in the Upper Triangle. Her goal was to loot all their money and give it to those in the old quarter. Their short walk ended amidst mostly empty docks. There was one boat that was still moored there, and its captain appeared to be working on cleaning a spare sail. Hail, merchant. Allard strode forward. The three of us need to get to the silo district. Are you for hire? The man looked at Allard, who towered over him and whose face was lost in the shadow of his hood. Tough trip upstream with the weak wind. We'll make it worth your while. Allard nodded to Mela, who pulled out a coin purse that was clearly bulging with funds. We truly could use your help, friend. The merchant nodded. Five guilders. Mela almost gasped. It was the price of twenty normal trips. The captain was clearly trying to rob them based on their dire need. Mela wanted to throttle the man, but Allard replied, Done. Paid up front. Mela, pay our kind friend. Allard replied. Mela resisted the temptation to pay with violence and removed five guilders from the coin purse. She handed them to the man, whose grin was as wide as the great river. You must really need to get to the silos the man said, waving the three of them onto the boat. As the boat set off and moved downstream, the short distance to the great river, Mela took in the view. It was a majestic spot to be on the river. 
The great river wasn't nearly as wide immediately north of the spot they were at, but the North Fork and the Old Fork both emptied into the river around the same location, and that widened the great river to its huge width for the rest of its course through Ness. They entered the great river and were about a third of the way across, and turning to move upstream when Allard spoke up. Captain, I'm afraid there has been a change in plans. The captain looked back from working the sails and frowned. I'm not going to take you to the mines or the outer fields if that's what you have in mind. You should feel lucky I am taking you to the silos. This is not a passenger ship. The disdain and lack of respect in the captain's voice made Mela clench her teeth. Oh, my friend, the new plan is much easier. Simply drop us off over there. Allard pointed to the other side of the river, which was a barren and rocky beach that led to the ash fields. The fields were so depressing and sad that they were hidden from view behind a tall stone wall. I'm not going to take you to the ash fields. Certainly you know it is against the law. In fact, I'm taking you back right now. Your request means you are Cretans and up to no good. Allard laughed. And you will, of course, keep our five guilders to teach us a lesson. The captain didn't say anything. Mela, convince the captain. Mela smiled as she slid her dagger out of its sheath. 